Marco Chiara and Sean. Andragogy and diversity. <clears throat> Andragogy means the adult form of learning, the adult form of teaching. The opposite of andragogy is pedagogy, which is child learning. You see here we have some diversity, hands, multicultural. Education is life. John Dewey wrote that. John Dewey was known to be the father of education. He had a, another colleague named Abraham Maslow. Some of you may have heard of Abraham Maslow. He initially started out as a, a human, humanistic behavioral psychologist and started working under John Thorndike at Columbia University and started seeing that there was a different style for people that, to learn. And I want to talk to you about adult learning today. The reason why everybody's in this class is different than when we were in high school, elementary school, we were forced to be there. We're here because we want to be, and adults learn at a different rate. This is about GED and ESL, and the purpose for those students deciding at some point, I need to learn English as a second language, like second language. I need to go back and get my GED. One can choose to go back towards safety or forward towards growth. Growth must be chosen again and again. Fear must be overcome again and again. And as I spoke to you about Abraham Maslow, some of you may know him from as the author of The Hierarchy of Needs. If you get an opportunity to read that, some of this came from the Gale Encyclopedia of Psychology and the Young Persons Encyclopedia of Psychology. I'm going to talk to you today about Miss Rowena Stansell. Miss Rowena Stansell is a native of Washington, born and raised in Washington. <clears throat> And at some point, as she was growing up, her grandmother was the breadwinner, was her guardian, was her sole provider. They had a great life. Grandmother provided for her and her siblings. And at 14 years of age, her grandmother passed away. Miss Stansell has worked various jobs, various labor-oriented positions, and was shipped from house to house. Said that people didn't enforce her going to school. However, they made a point to spend the money that she got when her grandmother passed away. I know it sounds sad, but that's the world that we live in. She's currently working as a certified nursing, nurse's aide or nurse's assistant and aspires to be a registered nurse. Now, in order to be a registered nurse, she realizes through a couple life heartaches that being a CNA and not having her GED affects where you live. She would rather raise her kids in a house that versus an apartment. It affects what type of vehicle you drive. Is it sound? Is it safe? Is it reliable? Regardless of where you are, what station you are in life, you still have to have reliable transportation to get where you need to go. She would much rather drive a truck or an SUV instead of a small vehicle. Kids are growing up, they're in sports. She wants to be able to transport them and their friends to these sporting events. It affects what type of community you live in. Economics has a large play in where you live. And she has realized that not having a GED has kept her held back. And she would like to be able to put her kids 
raise her kids in a community. Now, I don't know if, if any of you live in communities. I live in a community. I know my mailman. I know my next door neighbor. I see their kids. I even know their family members. Living in a community is really big for the, for the success of a family and children as they come up through the school ages. Here you see the family, which is very important, family structure. Another picture you see a nurse, a registered nurse assisting a patient. And then at the bottom you see a house. That house is not in a HUD community. When you have ownership and those that are living that community have a stake in the cleanliness and peace, peaceable living in a community, it flourishes. And economics affects where you live. Another speaker is going to be coming to you, and I want to give you three words. Motivation, it's a state of mind, and a cause. Persistence, persistence is defined as what motivates you to do something even after the cause is taken away. And in Rowena's case, it was school. Her grandmother was the cause, was the driving force, and she dropped out. Then she went back. So she had some, she had some good principles instilled in her. And optimism. Optimism means that you feel the overall good will always, always win over evil. Motivation is an external, temporary high that pushes you forward. And inspiration is a sustainable internal glow which pulls you forward. I read that in the 6 o'clock news by Tom Leonard. And these are three things that relate to Nanita. She was motivated to continue, you know, going on with everything that she had going on. She was inspired to come to America and make things better for her and her family. And she had the tenacity to move forward with all of these different, you know, barriers already against her. We are all here because we have a common goal, and that is to succeed. Not all of us have the same story, but like I said, the common goal is to succeed. Nanita, she didn't have such, she didn't have the opportunity as much as we did. Here in America, we do take schooling for granted. When you're in high school, like as Marco said, we're kind of forced to go, but then college is a whole different thing. Well, Nanita, she's from the Philippines, a small, you know, a small area mm -hmm. called Samar. And that's where her family set up, you know, that's where her home was, that she was born and raised. And her family, they were farmers. Now the difference between Philippine schooling and American schooling is that they have to pay to go to school, not just for college, but high school, elementary school, and things of that sort. And so when the economy got bad, her parents were forced to come out of the farming because there were no resources for them to earn the money. So that's <coughs> when it was up to Nanita to continue her college, I mean, to continue her schooling depending on something other than her parents' resources. So what she did was, she became a waitress, as well as an entertainer, doing exactly what it is that she needs to do, striving, being motivated to continue on her education. And so, when she turned 18, she got married. And then she stayed in Samar for another year after that, and at 19, her, her husband joined the military, and they were shipped off to Japan for five years. Still not having any, you know, prior knowledge of a, maybe a lower education, but still having to do the deal of the daily duties, not only as a person, but also now as a wife. So she had those extra things to go against. So 
She stayed, once she left Japan after five years, she came here to the United States. And she knew that if they were going to be here, she needed to be able to adapt to her environment. So her husband began teaching her how to speak English. And once she, you know, got used to learning the English, her husband was helping her, she received her GED. And now she is going, she is in school now for culinary arts. And she's just also now that she tutors as an ESL person. So not only did she take what she knew and learned it for herself, but now she's expressing it to other people and letting them know, hey, this is possible. You know, the odds were kind of kind of against me from the jump, but this is something that I'm still willing to do for a better future for me, my family, and our loved ones. And so um, in the next couple of years, what she really wants to do And this is the picture of when her family was farming and as far as schooling and things of that sort. And her favorite things to make are her, she wants to be a, she wants to get her AA in culinary arts. And her favorite things to make are lumpia and different types of pork barbecues and things of that sort. But her overall goal is to learn how to cook for all types of foods, you know, and just be able to explore the different things but still have that Asian cuisine kind of spice to it. And so what her main goals are is she really wants to work, either own or work in a big restaurant, but they have to do karaoke. I think that's what she did as entertainment was karaoke, so she kind of wants to tie that in with her. And I can respect that because you're still bringing some of you, some of your old environment to your new environment. And in the next 10 years, what she really wants to do, she said it pretty much depends on the economy. And I'm pretty sure we're all here based on jobs that are going to be good for the economy in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. All right, and so the three things that just make Nanita a very good person, once again, is she is a motivated person. She's inspired to do better for, once again, herself, her family, and her children. And the tenacity, even to come from that and then come to this, and then now that she's here, she still has that drive to continue to want to expand her education and expand her horizons and work in a big restaurant. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to start by just welcoming the person that I'll be speaking on today, Young. If you all give Young a round of applause. Loyalty, perseverance, and drive. These are just a number of things that I can say to describe the characteristic of Young. As you can see, I have an American flag and a Korean flag. This represents Young in so many ways. Young, being a native of Korean, of Korea, has started from humble beginnings. Her parents were both hard workers. She really didn't go into it. She told me, just keep it simple. And that's what I plan to do today. She said her parents were both hard working, and she prized that to her values today that she has as a hard worker. In 1989, in 1980, Young was married to an American GI that she met in the South Korea. He was a U.S. soldier over there doing his part in the U.S. Army. They were married. They met each other, and they were married soon after. They resided in Korea for 12 more years before returning here to the U.S. When upon, becoming, upon coming to the U.S., Young was an adamant volunteer in church groups such as the Women's Mission Group, where she likes her when she talks about them. I can tell that this was a big part of her life because as soon as she started talking about them, she didn't talk much about many things, but this was one of the things that she was very happy to talk about. So I want to get a better understanding on volunteer work and some of the things that go into volunteer work. So I did a little research. And one of my readings, I found the four tiers of loyalty. And one of the sites, a passage said this that I'd like to share with you. It says, much like beauty, true loyalty lies beneath the surface. This was something that stuck out really well with me when I thought of Young's character. It takes a lot to be loyal to something that we don't get paid for. 
today in this society, we know that this is a money-driven society. And it takes a lot to be a loyal volunteer. This is why I say the young is loyal. Another word that I use to describe young was perseverance. Upon coming to the U.S., young had a dream to open a restaurant. And I, myself, personally know how hard it is to start a small business. And I can only imagine for a woman who had just came from Korea with the barriers, she's in the ESL right now, with the language barriers and all the barriers that stand before you to start a small business, how much perseverance it would take for someone of her caliber to start a small business. So I applaud her for that. This led me to doing a little bit more research. So I came across a book called A Time for Courage. And this was a story of a woman's mental and moral strength to persevere. Not as much, her, her story was a lot different from Young's with the things that she went through, but it still made me think of Young in so many ways. And this is Young's business that she had here in Tacoma for over 15 years. The business was long, the business, the work was long and hard, but she still persevered through it and kept it open for over 15 years. This business will still be open to this day, but Young wanted to spend more time with her family and friends and do things that she felt she was missing out on. Young has three children. Two are teenagers now, and one is older, he's 31. So I'm sure that she took that in consideration when she did what she did to close this down and focus more on her and her new career. Drive. If you haven't heard the drive in Young so far, I'll give you a little bit more. She opened a restaurant. She came here. She made it thrive for a number of years. That in itself is drive. Today, she's in the ESL program to get her GED and to better herself. She wants to go on after she finished the GED program to go back to college and go for accounting. She says, you'll notice that we have a calculator up here. She's a math whiz. I don't know too many math whiz. I'm thinking about asking her to tutor me as we speak because I'm not that good on math. So I think that she'll be fine with any, any obstacle that she has to hurt over because she has to drive to get where she wants to go. Family. As I stated earlier, Young is of Korean descent. And we might not know it here as Westerners, but there's a big cultural divide between Asian and Americans. The ethnicity barrier is, is really huge. And Koreans are no exception. I want to get a better feel of the Korean family and just some of the things that they go through on a daily. So I, I found a book and it was called Keeping It Korean. And a passage that really made me think about Young and, and, and just, I was glad that she came today. I, I really want to share this with her. Cause the, just when she said, when she started to talk about her family, she was really involved and I took it as a great cultural divide. She, she's Asian. She was, she would, I would ask her a question and want a uh, really in depth answer she would say well I don't feel comfortable with that just let's keep it simple this and, and uh, she would just keep it a short answer so I would say well you know I really just want to be able to give the best presentation about you as possible so if you could give me a little bit more and she would smile and that's how I know she was warming and, and inviting but when I asked her about her family that's one of the things that hey she automatically just started giving me as much as I wanted and in this book, Keeping It Korean, it said, the well-being of family and its adequate function, functioning are essential for the quality of life. And I feel this way to myself. <clears throat> I truly feel inspired to be a met young and to have went through this speech and preparation for this speech with young. I can tell that her family is a big, a big part of her life, and it makes her happy to know that her family is happy. 
So that's why I put this up for you. It's a traditional Korean family and some of their more traditional wear, cultural wear. And this just made me resonate with some of the things that I thought that Young conveyed to me. And this are just some of the things that makes her a unique and great individual. And in conclusion, i just like to say, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't even know what ESL stood for or what it meant. But, the, but today, I stand before you truly inspired by one of its many participants. And I hope that you have enjoyed my speech on Young as much as I enjoyed meeting her. Thank you.